Hi there, my name is Taylor Coplin, and in the last video, we went over how to use uh, the executor function in the MA software and how to use and understand the faders in the MA2 software. If you're interested in that, I highly recommend checking out the last video. But in this video, we're going to be going over um, how to use QStacks and or how to make them. Uh, so let's get started with that. So let's let's make something basic okay so we'll bring down our intensity actually you know we'll we'll straight up just we'll off off these guys um there we go so now we have nothing running even off that one cool and let's say um i'm going to take my symmetrical group and in my first queue i want it to just go to full intensity okay and maybe i want it to be red sure uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit store. Okay. And then we are going to select a, I'm just going to use a fader here. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You can put it as an executor, both work. Uh, so let's just put on fader eight here. And then, uh, we can see we've recorded our first queue. That was pretty easy, right? So if I hit go, you can see our lights turn on and they're red, which is perfect. And we can hit off and they turn off. Uh, we can also fade that in, uh, if it permits me. There we go. And we can use the fader to fade in our first cue. Keep in mind, every time you fade this in, it is going to start from the first cue. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's make another cue. So now we have our, our lights are on, okay, right? So we can bring it back to full. And let's say I want it to go from red to a C green, okay? Well, all right, well, now we've created our look and maybe, you know what, let's add something else to it. Let's say I want it to go to this position here. Okay, well now I have what I have, you know, made in the programmer, I'm happy with it. I'm gonna hit store and then I'm gonna click on our queue that we just recorded. It's gonna come up with a prompt, okay? And it's saying, hey, there's already a queue here. What do you wanna do with it? And we're, you know, we're prompted with a few options. We can overwrite merge, status merge, remove, release, or create second queue. Well, in this case, since we're making a queue stack, we're gonna create a second queue, okay? And now you can see here we have Q1 and Q2, and we can even go into here and we can see our queues. So let's, before we really dive into the queue stack menu or you know the queue editor, um, or I guess it's not even a queue, it's like a playback or executor. Anyways, I'm not too big on <laughs> terminology. Uh, let's say I want the next queue to be magenta and then I wanna go out. Sure, and then maybe we can even have it um, zoom. Sure, let's zoom those guys in. Okay, let's store. And you're gonna notice here, well, we've already had two queues here, so it's actually not gonna prompt us whenever we store here. Because it's just assuming that, hey, you wanna make more queues which is fine until say you screw something up and you want to overwrite or merge into a queue. We'll get into that in a bit. Uh, so we'll just add uh, something else, something that's, uh, we'll, we'll go green and maybe we'll give it a, um, a gobo if it wants to pop up with the gobo menu. Hello. Uh, Maybe if I just, yeah. And then maybe we'll make this one slightly rotate a little bit. And then maybe because the gobo on it, we will actually zoom it out. And you know, let's make it white so it's easy to see. And maybe we choose a different gobo that's a little easier to see as well. Sure. Let's do that. Store this here and um you know let's let's say hey for our next queue uh we're actually going to turn that off turn this off we'll go back to our uh narrow uh our narrow zoom and then um uh, i want that to go that way i don't know sure i want that look why not uh, and then we'll hit store and then cool. We record our cues. We'll clear out. And now let's see what we made. So we'll just go down here. 
Our fader's all the way up already, and we'll just hit go. So lights come on in red, and move into position. I go here now. We're here now. And now we're here. Oh, and because, okay, so this is a perfect example. So uh, let's say, hey, like, I didn't want the gobo to stay on for this. Well, okay, how can we fix that? Well, uh, what we can do is we can, so we open up our Q stack by just clicking on the, uh, you see where it says like Q5, Q4, and Q1. Click on that little area there in that box. And now that brings up our queue list. Well, now we can select what's inside of our queue. So let's call up our lights, okay? And we'll go to our Gobo tab. And we'll say, I think, is, is it zero for Gobo open? Yeah, perfect. And we'll do, uh, I think it's 50 for no rotate. Yeah, perfect. So now these are in red, which means they are active in the programmer and ready to be recorded. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit store now and we're gonna click on Q5. Okay, and now it's gonna bring up this menu asking us what we wanna do with it. And we are gonna hit merge, okay? If you hit overwrite, that means basically everything in the queue is gonna be deleted and then it's only gonna store that gobo value. Okay, which means it's gonna hold its information from the last queue and then just add a gobo value onto it. But since we are editing our gobo value, we just wanna merge, okay? We're gonna merge that. And now when we go through our queue stack, if we hit, so I, I cleared out the programmer, so we're no longer there. Now if you run through here, you can see, yep, yep, now we have our Gobo on, and then now Gobo should be off. Perfect, looks great. Um, turning our attention to this window, which I will promptly make bigger so it's easier for y'all to see. Um, what we can do is we can edit uh, a lot of things here. So there's trigger types, you know, you can have it follow, uh, go to a sound, BPM, time code, all these fun things. So um, let's say we want um, Q2 to run a follow queue, okay? Well, how does that work? Okay, well, let's take a look. So we hit go, okay? It's gonna take us to the top of our queue stack. You can see, oh, it just immediately went to our second queue. And that's because it's listening to this first queue, okay? So if we say, uh let's edit the trigger time so let's say it has a trigger time of one second okay and then we can offer q stack or sorry i need to edit for this one okay so that plus one means it is going to wait a second before it starts uh triggering that follow queue as you can see there right you see runs through cool but that's a little harsh of a transition. So what if we gave it like a uh, two second fade? Okay. Well, now we can restart our thing here. And yeah, that looks a lot smoother and not so snappy. You can also add fade outs and delays. And then um, when you get more into it, if you need to, you can run commands. Uh, this is great for if you're programming with uh, effects, using the same effect over and over again, but you want the speed to change, uh, you can tell the um, speed masters to change to a specific BPM, which is something we'll get into later in the future. Uh, you can give a delay to run the command, which is pretty great, uh, which is separate from the delay over here. Uh, but keep in mind, it's gonna use this delay first, right? And then once it fires the queue, then uh, the command delay will start counting. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of other stuff in here that you could totally mess with um, and, you know, really customize it to what you want. Uh, of course, it is always good practice to label your cues. Uh, so if you had like, you know, obvious moments, you know, say this is like the intro and this is like, you know, the build and then this is, you know, um, this is a big moment for your show, whatever. And then, um, yeah, say uh, drums, you know, crazy, crazy moment in outro. There you go. So now it's nicely labeled and you can see it down here too, uh, which is pretty awesome. Um, and then maybe 
for here because it renames the header. We can go here and say this is song one. Sure. Um, so yeah, yeah I, I like to go through and you know you can customize your fade times for everything. Give everything a two second fade time. So now when I jump through here, it's not snapping and everything's fading nicely and looks really nice and uh, smooth. I highly recommend making a marker queue for your gobos or anything that has a color wheel so you don't see it scrolling. And that way, whenever you bring up the intensity of your fixture, uh, you just don't see that scrolling effect whenever your lights are uh, in place. Uh, you can also do that for positions too. Um, you just make a queue uh, before your intensity comes on and it should all be good. Uh, am I missing anything else? Uh, oh, we didn't really go over these um, time. Um, you can say, hey, after it's almost like a follow queue. So, hey, after, you know, three seconds, uh, you're going to activate the next queue. You can see it's, yeah, it's waiting, waiting, and now it's going. Uh, and we give all these uh, two second fade queue. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so it's going to follow and then it's going to wait three seconds. Uh, time is almost like a delay in a sense. Um, but there's uh, times where it gets used, um, you know, rather than delay. Um, yeah, and then sound, BPM, and time code. Uh, can't really show you those right now, but I feel like they're pretty self explanatory. Um, uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything else. I can go to, oh, you know what? Uh, I can show you this. So we can copy Q stacks and you can put them in executors. And now you can fire it from a executor window. Um, and by the way, hitting go overwrites the uh, delays or times. So it will just go straight into that queue. Uh, but yeah, that's how you make Q stacks. It's pretty basic, uh, pretty easy. And I hope that this helps you all, you know, make your show files. Uh, look good and uh, hopefully hassle free. Yeah, that's all for this video. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you on the next one.